In this paper, um, I want to talk about the internal religious landscape of the earliest Christian cemeteries in Skagafjörður, the North Iceland. In the last decade, we've led two projects aimed at surveying and excavating the earliest Christian cemeteries in Skagafjörður. Um, <clears throat> the earlier Skagafjörður Church project and the currently ongoing interdisciplinary Skagafjörður Church and Settlement Survey. The research is meant to answer a number of important questions regarding the advent of early Christianity in the region, such as how many the first churches and cemeteries were, where they were located in the landscape, what were the burial customs, who was buried in them, when they were established and or abandoned, and not least what the relationship between settlement history and church development may be. Although the premise of the research deals with early Christianity is not meant to be a comprehensive assessment of the pagan Christian religious transition, but rather the actual realities that are represented in the burial record of the earliest Christian farmstead centuries. And this beautiful white circle you see there is the uh, cemetery uh, excavating at the moment, and this is the Tefra from Hecla 1104, which marks the circle, inner circle of the cemetery. The survey has revealed over 130 possible early church and cemetery sites, which is in all, uh, uh, all likelihood an underestimation. In large areas, every farm seems seemed to have had one, which has led us to believe that in Skafir, there at least most independent farms had established a cemetery that served the main farm and a subsidiary, possibly a subsidiary small holding. Four cemeteries have been excavated extensively, and three is a part of uh, the two projects I've just mentioned. Um, and further 13 cemeteries have been ex examined through small test trenches. Um, <clears throat> most cemeteries have come into being around or just after the uh, assumed official conversion in AD 1000. And there appears to have been a widespread discontinuation of burial in the late 11th, early 12th centuries. In some cases, though, the churches remained functional as household chapels after the cemetery ceased being used for burials. From the onset, these cemeteries appear to have been actively managed as their location, shape, size and layout are relatively uniform. The cemeteries are circular or oval, on average about 17 meters in circumference, with a small church, usually wooden, structure at their center, and containing the burials of two to five generations of farm occupants. All cemeteries have been firmly associated with a dwelling, often only a few meters away, and most commonly, but not exclusively, situated just south of the house. This association between the farm and the cemetery seems to have been important as in some cases the cemetery has been closed down and relocated along with the farmhouse after a reorganization of farmstead, which then is different than if the Faroe Islands. <clears throat> um, the geography of the early Christian landscape uh, we have looked on upon as being both external and internal. The external geography is the position of the cemetery in the landscape, the outward appearance of structures such as the cemetery walls and churches, and the cemetery's relationship to landscape or man-made features, and possible pre-Christian burial grounds. The internal geography, on the other hand, comprises internal furnishings such as coffins, grave goods, or other inclusions in graves, the layout of burials, positioning of the body, and the actual demographics and social actions of the cemetery populations. Here I want to touch on this internal aspect of the religious landscape, which I believe adds an important dimension to our discussion on this topic. I will present material from three cemeteries that we have now fully, or almost fully, excavated in Skagafjörður, Keldudalur, Keplavik, and Sela, and attempt to put the data into wider social and religious context. These cemeteries are very much a product of a household-level burial management that seems to have followed a set of rules or traditions, but at the same time entails a number of idiosyncratic elements. 
In general, the burial customs comply with what has been defined as Christian traits, simple inhumations, east-west orientations, and lack of grave goods. In general, there is very little to suggest pre-Christian burial rites, and the proliferation of these structures, these Christian uh, cemetery structures, seem to suggest a swift adoption to the new religion. This slide shows the layout and sex, uh, sex segregation um, in the three cemeteries, and they're put to scale. These are our actual three cemeteries we have already excavated. The first thing to note is the internal layout, um, which I think display evidence for a pre-ordained man management. Looking at these three cemeteries, it becomes obvious that there's a marked focus of burials to the north, east, and south of the churches. This incidentally can also be seen in other contemporary Icelandic, Scandinavian, and North Atlantic cemeteries that were abandoned early. At both Sela and Keplavik, the earliest graves were in the easternmost part of the cemetery, and they seem to have uh, filled in towards the west. This lack of burials in the west may support the notion that the western part of a cemetery was the least favorable as has been, uh, for instance, suggested by Bertha Nilsson. Early Norwegian provincial laws, uh, on the other hand, uh, emphasize the east and the south as the most favorable position within the cemetery. Uh, it must be noted, however, that the Keltuta, at Keltutalur, uh, the earliest graves were just west of the church, um, which may perhaps indicate uh, this is an earlier uh, cemetery. But the other graves, uh, the later graves in the cemetery, on the uh, same as everywhere else, are positioned east, uh, north, and south. The burials of individuals, according to age, sex, status, and gender, is a form of social zoning, which in a cemetery without grave goods becomes visible mostly through the osteological analyses. This form of management may be seen in the segregation of the sexes in the early Christian cemeteries where women were buried in the northern half, and men in the southern half. This form of segregation is well attested in Icelandic, North Atlantic, and Scandinavian cemeteries. Although, as far as I know, and you may um, correct me, um, I think the uh, sky of the cemeteries show the mark, most marked segregation, with no apparent intermixing of the sexes. Elsewhere, sex segregation or clustering um, may be attributed to the cemeteries being used, for instance, monastic communities, and in some instances they're catered, they catered for different sections of society, for instance, women and ch or children. That sex segregation was so marked in the scale of the material um, is, to my mind, the evidence of the short-lived household nature, where the entire cemetery was essentially a demarcated social unit. This tradition, uh, however, seems to have been disappearing in, in the 12th century already. Uh, it's known from a Norwegian provincial law that cemeteries were socially divided with those positioned out by the cemetery wall of lower status. In our, our cemeteries, <coughs> coffin burials uh, were relatively common but seem to have been less common in graves next to the cemetery walls. We have been able to show that graves out by the cemetery walls were not necessarily later, uh, chronologically later, than the ones placed nearer to churches, which indicates that the lack of coffins may be interpreted as having a social aspect to it. Hence, we have tentatively identified the use of coffins as an indication of status within the household. It has become clear in the scale of the material that stones played an important part of the 11th century burial rites, perhaps partially, partially, sorry, as a continuation of uh, pre-Christian customs. In some instances, graves were marked by stones on the surface, as seen on this slide, this from this summer's excavation. Um, but stones were also deliberately deposited in the grave fill. Most notably, around the heads of individuals in coffinless graves, the so-called earmuffs or pillows. 
um, an interesting local variant uh, to that uh, are the use of turf for the propping off of, of heads, as the well, use of tephra pillows for uh, infants. In some instances, stones were also placed directly above the skulls of the infants. Stones were sometimes also placed uh, around on or above skeletons without coffins, as well on top of coffins, especially at the head or foot end. In the cemetery of Keplavik, stones on top of graves could be found both uh, on, on the male and female graves, but stones placed in the graves are more likely to be found in graves of females. A fair number of white stones, small white stones, um, have been recovered uh, in old cemeteries, uh, most notably this summer when we found a stone at each of the four post holes of our church at Keplavik. The use of stones has been widely reported in many medieval contexts in late Anglo-Saxon cemeteries in England, as well as Irish Scandinavian uh, contexts. White stones are particularly common in uh, the Christian setting, um, and have been some by thought, been thought to emphasize the identity of the population or uh, its individuals as Christia Christians, and thus their inclusion in the Christian community. Another form of social stoning uh, may be seen in the removal of bodies from cemeteries. In all three cemeteries, there is evidence for the removal of bodies from their graves when the burial grounds were abandoned or relocated. This practice seems to be an act of a family, as in all instances, only select individuals were removed, which suggests that the removed individuals would have had a particular meaning for the people who owned the cemetery. <coughs> This is supported by anecdotal saga accounts as well. Um, <clears throat> this is an overview of the uh, site of Sela, um, where you can see on the, the right hand side, there's a, a, a bird's eye view of the cemetery itself. And the big trench you see there, north, east and south of the church, is actually an 11th century removal pit when they removed uh, bodies from graves. This more extensive removal at Sela may be due to the fact that the individuals were being removed to a cemetery on the same farm. Even so, the people out by the cemetery walls and infants were selectively left behind, which hints at some form of social or age-related segregation, if you will. This action seems uh, in contrast to good Christian practice um, and may be possibly be seen as a continuation of an earlier practice um, and may point to a certain continuation of uh, a household uh, level management, pre-Christian. It's well attested in medieval European cemeteries that disturbance of graves uh, is common by the 11th century um, in early scale further household cemeteries, great care, though, seems to have been put into graves, not into cutting, which makes this very deliberate uh, act of removal all the more interesting. This form of selective systematic removal, I'm just going to show you the slide. Um, you can see the difference between Sela uh, and the current cemetery in, of Keplowick, where we had four individuals, three individuals at Keltodamish. This form of selective removal is, to my knowledge, um, specifically Icelandic, uh, and the very detailed removal section of our 12th century laws may possibly be interpreted as an attempt to curb uh, or to regulate this household uh, practice. So um, in this short talk, only a few internal cemetery features have been discussed but the material offers a wealth of analytical possibilities. The burial customs and layout visible in the cemeteries seems to be a mis mishmash of customs that can be observed in early cemeteries throughout Northern Europe. Various features, such as the use of stones and graves, may speak of more folkloristic or pre-Christian traditions, but such folk traditions were also very common in uh, Christian cemeteries elsewhere. 
Although the removal of bodies and minor differences in cemetery layout may speak of idiosyncratic household level actions, the remarkable uniformity of both church and cemetery design, as well as burial customs, show a marked degree of management and knowledge of the Christian uh, burial practices. Where this knowledge came from and how it was distributed is, however, still a mystery. These temporarily well-defined cemeteries are also adding to our knowledge on uh, the age of certain burial customs, such as uh, sex segregation, <clears throat> which has been interpreted as a possible 12th century development, but we now know that it was practiced already at the be very beginning of the 11th century. The appearance of Christian burial rites at, at the household level seems to have been a rapid affair, um, but perhaps the abandonment of the centuries around the turn of the 11th century um, is an indication that the societal and institutional uh, transformation to Christianity only happened around that time. Thank you.